Well, hello everybody. Welcome to part eight of this 1932 mystery cathedral radio. Thank you kindly. And no, this is not part of the radio. This is a new toy I bought. This is a uh, component tester. It doesn't come in any little cabinet or anything. So I mounted it on this board and I got these uh, clips mounted on here so if, when it's not in use it can just be laying in there like that you think you will walk away undeathed let's uh, test some components here shall we first off let's test this capacitor here this is a uh, a 300 picofarad so we'll just clip it on here now I got the lights kind of dim here because uh, you won't be able to see the display so that's why it looks kind of dark. Okay I'm just going to turn it on here and that should read that capacitor. Ah, here we go. <laughs> what have we here? And it's showing that it, it is a capacitor. And it says 307 picofarads. Kind of a little nifty thing, huh? That's nifty. Here's an old electrolytic I pulled out of uh, one of my testers, tube testers. Let's just see what that is. Supposedly it's a uh, 20 microfarad. If you test me, you will fail. Okay, there it goes. Uh, this is reading a 36.28 microfarad. This also measures ESR. And I don't have a, uh, a sheet that tells me what this means. I'll have to get something like that. And it's got this uh, V loss equal 1.1%. I'm not sure what that means either. And why not? We'll have to uh, look that up. Capital idea. Pretty neat, huh? Oh, that's neat. All right, let's uh, remove this and just try a resistor in here. Now, I think this resistor is one meg. Let's just hook this up. Now, when I turn it on here, it gives you the voltage of the battery. Nice! Okay, it's saying it's 1,004 kV, which is one uh, meg. Okay, the reason I got this was uh, Brendan suggested I get it because in today's episode we're going to figure out how to wind uh, an antenna coil and in order to wind a coil you need to measure it in Henry's and this actually uh, measures uh, coils in Henry's among other things and I have an antenna coil here that I bought and we're going to test this and uh, just check it out and uh, check the ohms and the Henry's on it. Okay. Now I believe the uh, primary coil on this, see there's a dot there, a red dot. So what we want is uh, pins three and four. Okay, let's see what happens when we uh, hit the, the on button. Look here. Now what's the point of this? It recognizes this as an inductor. It measures 40.1 ohms. And right here, it says 2.1 millihenries. Uh, huh? Okay, that's the primary. The secondary on this is pins one and two. George, not understand. All right, that measures 9.4 ohms, and that's a 0.18 millihenries. Very handy when you're uh, trying to wind a coil and you're trying to get into the ballpark. Okay, let's test the coil here. Now, the only part of this coil that works is the secondary winding. And you can see it right here. It runs from up here to up here. And I got the tester hooked up to it. Now, uh, Brandon gave me some information uh, earlier about uh, sort of a generic type 
antenna coil for a TRF radio, which this one is. And I'll show you that picture right here. Now, if you look at that picture, it shows 230 micro Henry's for the secondary. Yes. And the primary is supposed to be 2 to 10. All right. So let's turn this uh, on here and see what we get. Now, this is going to measure this in millihenries, so we'll have to do some conversion here. Simple mathematics. As you can see there, it's measuring uh, 5 ohms, and it's 0.26 millihenries. Now, if we do the uh, conversion, that translates to 260 microhenries, and the picture is showing 230, so we're not too far off there. So what I'm going to have to do is wind uh, a primary right here and this is where it used to be. You can tell by this coloring here. This, is, this was all burned, remember? And it came out about uh, 3 16 of an inch. So I'm going to wind and wind and wind until I get it looking just about uh, like it was. And a lot more on top of that because I can always take some off, but it's too hard to, to add, you know what I'm saying? So let's get that done, huh? Okay, I'm gonna put some toner on here. This is a medium walnut, mohawk. Let's use a tack cloth. What I'm gonna do here is, see this one strip is too light. I'm gonna cover everything up and just put a little toner on here and darken this up before I start on the rest of it. When a man and a woman see each other and like each other, they ought to come together, wham, like a couple of taxis on Broadway and not sit around analyzing each other like two specimens in a bottle. You don't want to do too much. I'm going to let that dry for about 10 minutes and come back to it. Okay, there you see the, uh, the light part that uh, I wanted to put on there first. So let's go ahead and do the rest of it and see what happens. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Ah, oh, you know, a man's work is never done. What do you think? It's starting to pop, don't you think? You have a rather unique skill set. I'd be interested in offering you a job. I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. I have completed the uh wiring on the underside of the chassis here. Here is the power resistor. This was uh, very hard to find some space on here, but that fit on there pretty good. And I put the fuse right here on the edge of the transformer. I glued the base of it right there. So I think that looks pretty good. And then I added the cord. You can see the power cord here with uh, the cloth covered wire. And I use an old uh, plug here from who knows how old this is. It looks kind of old and neat and that's what I'm looking for. Welcome to another edition of Experimenting with Buzz. Now we're going to experiment with this antenna coil. This is the one I bought. Wow, you are so cheap. And this supposedly works uh, a generic one for a uh, super heterodyne radios so I don't know if it's gonna work on this so let's just try it and here's the schematic uh, of this you got pins one and two one is connected to the grid second is going to ground and the uh, for the antenna side the antenna is hooked up to four and it's grounded on three so let's just see what we got here I've got uh, this one bypassed completely, so that's not in the picture. So the first station you're going to hear is the one that's five miles from here, and it's really uh, loud because it picks it up real good. 
Let's just see what happens. Okay, there's that. Let's see if it picks up anything. And this is 1360 on the dial, so we're gonna go. We're going towards the lower side of the dial now. Radio better than the internet. No reading required. I'm picking up a barely a whisper at the low end of the dial, so it's picking up two stations. Now let's reverse the uh, the wires here. Instead of one going to the grid, we'll put four, and then uh, we'll connect the antenna to uh, pin one. And I've got these wires right here. Radio. It's like TV without all the colors. Okay, that's picking up a 620 on the dial. It's one station. That's two stations. It's three stations. Four stations. Five stations. Quest lines are now open. KGFJ Soul Radio. And that's the powerful station. That's six stations is picking up. Okay, now we're going to try something different here. This is called a high impedance uh, capacitive coupling. Now, instead of a primary winding, Take a look at this picture. It shows a 3 to 10 picofarad capacitor. Wow! And since the secondary is about 230, and that's what ours is, 230 microhenries, we're going to try that. So the secondary is here, and here is going to be the primary, which is nothing but a capacitor. Let's just see how many stations we pick up here. We'll try it at the top of the dial here. It's one station. Radio finally worth listening to. It's two stations. It's three stations. If you can't get BBC, how about a little guy Lombardo? The man was Four stations. And that's all that. With this a high impedance setup, it picks up four stations, or the other setup. But the other antenna picked up six. Makes you kind of wonder, huh? So what I want to do is I want to uh, wind uh, the primary over here. And uh, I had no idea how much uh, it would take to uh, get to uh, 2 to 10 microhenries. So I used this pencil here. And believe it or not, just this little winding here, this measures uh, 20 microhenries. Just that little bit here. Now they say it has something to do with the diameter of the winding and stuff. We're gonna find out uh, exactly uh, if that's correct. But look at that, that little winding, it looked like it only go around here about 10 times. Weird, because the original coil, it was sticking out about 3 16 So I don't know, I don't know. I picked up some wire. We're going to use this. This is a 40 gauge and it's very thin wire, but it's uh, solderable. Is that a word? Solderable? I will. It, you can solder to it. How about that? <laughs> so don't go away. We're going to wind the coil. Hot damn. Okay, before we can wind here, I want to take the wire and wrap it around uh, where it's going to be a ground and solder that in there real good so <laughs> I can't even see the damn thing holy mackerel what am I getting myself into here you're screwing you're driving me crazy too I'm seeing things here Let's see if I can solder that yes you you're driving me crazy what did I do? 
what did I do? My tears for you make everything hazy, clouding the sky of blue. How true were the friends who were near me to cheer me, believe me, they knew. But you were the kind that would hurt me, desert me when I needed you. Yes, you, you're driving me crazy. What did I do to you? Okay, I'm going to quit right here. I'm going to cut this wire, scrape it off, and measure uh, what we got on here. I have no idea what it's going to read, but I believe it's going to be a lot more than what I need. Okay, we're ready to test it now. What I need is uh, like a .01. I think that's 10 microhenries. So let's see what we get here. Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> It's measuring 0.7 millihenries. So I, if I convert that to microhenries, that's 700. Holy mackerel, dear. Holy smoke! As you can see, it's a lot more than I need. Before I do anything, I want to test that. Okay, I have the coil hooked up. All I have to do is uh, connect this antenna to this red wire here. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's the 620 station on the dial. Read aloud. See how many stations I can get. It's one. It's two. Three. That's four, very faint. Five. Six. Radio, it's free. Why not? Seven. And it's going. That's one. Well, there's another guy, today. Is Buzz on the right track or what? I picked up seven, and this is uh, way too many micro Henry's, so I'm gonna take some off. We can get this any better. Okay, I shortened it to 0.3 milli Henry's, which is uh, 300 micro Henry's. We'll start up here at the top of the dial again. One, two, three. Or more music, more often. Five, six. That's a fascinating question. Seven. Let's take some more off. See what we get. Take it off here, boss. Yeah, take it off then. Eh? I'll just wind it around here. Okay, that's a 0 0.08 millihenries, which is 80 microhenries. It was supposed to be 1 to 10 microhenries, so it's got to come down some more. As you can see here, I took quite a bit off. Let's test this to see what this is. I'm looking for 1 to 10 microhenries or 0.01 which is 10 right there <laughs> I just hit the, hit it right on the button here well, this is the max I don't know if I want to go down anymore because there's not, not much wire there there that I would say there's like 20 turns on there let's test it see what happens well here it is at uh, 10 millihenries and it's worse volumes all the way up at one station, two stations, three, and that's the, that's the powerful one. 
I got it wound the way it's supposed to be. Well, let's go back up there and uh, should have quit while I was ahead. I know this radio isn't going to pick up a lot of stations, and, and it was a cheap radio in 1932, and it's still a cheap radio. So if I can get six stations on it, that's fine with me. So I'll have to unwind that and put some new wire on. Well, old Buzz had a long, long day yesterday trying to figure this thing out. Aww. When last we left, I had to unwind the coil to 10 micro Henry's, which was specified in the, that little diagram there, but uh, the reception was just terrible on it. And it was even worse when this gimmick was hooked up to it. They call this a gimmick here. It's supposed to add some capacitance to this and sort of couple the two coils together. But I noticed when this is connected in here, and I tried to measure uh, the micro handage with this, it only would recognize it as a resistor, just measuring the uh, resistance. When I took this off and hooked it up and measured the uh, micro handage, it worked okay. So this gimmick, as they call it, is interfering uh, with my reception. <laughs> So I started to uh, think about that. Brendan suggested I use a uh, uh, one of these uh, adjustable capacitors. I got this from an old radio. And what I'm going to do here is hook up the antenna to one side of here and hook up to the other side of this. And I'm going to hook up the other side to where the primary coil is. You see I rewound the primary coil back to uh, 0.3 millihenries, which is 300 microhenries. I know that's confusing, but you just, it's, a, it's a times 10 thing. So this is a lot more than uh, what that picture shows, but uh, who knows if that picture is right for this radio. You know, you got to go with what sounds the best, and that didn't sound good at all. So what sounded best was when it had more wire on it. And so I put more wire on it. So let's just turn this on and see what we get here. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. It's one... Two, three, four, four stations. I don't care about, about these stations like that sports station on 620. I want to get the uh, 970. Ah, uh, Crystal said it played better. This is 970. I want 970 and I want 1190 which is completely wiped out it can it's completely wiped out by 1390 there so i was hoping i could just experiment here and uh, see if i can get at least one of those within range that it sounds halfway decent uh, 970 here keep your voice down your father's listening to the radio yeah okay now don't believe everything you hear on the radio. So Hillary hires cheaters, people that are responsible for racist, sexist, misogynistic, anti Semitic. That's really going, going up. He didn't even know who David Duke was, and he was asked to wow. so Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? This is all in your hands. I, I, have, I feel like I am giving every. Holy crap. Holy cow! Right about there. Because if she gets elected, look how loud that is. Absolutely be impotent and incapable of governing, and we will be in a constitution. See if I can get any other station. Silence 
Hey. That is uh, 1190. It is incredible. Seven ninety. Let's go all the way to the bottom of the dial here. It's one station, two stations, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven stations, and the, my favorite ones are there. This is great. Let's measure what this is and see if I have a capacitor here. All right, this this is set. It sounded the best here at 60. I don't have a 60 here. I do have, I've got a 30. Try 30. Look, that's uh, 790. That's 1360, that powerful station. There's 1190 and it's coming in pretty loud. This is my Rush Limbaugh station. I want to make sure this one works. Hell yeah. This is incredible. So just to recap here, by removing the gimmick, and installing a, uh, a capacitor here I was able to pull in the stations that I want which is uh, usually around the middle of the dial and uh, try to stop some of the bleed over from the uh, the powerful 1360 it looks like this capacitor has done it so let's uh, see what it sounds like when I play uh, a song through my broadcaster here Play the song about the Irish Caropodus. Irish Caropodus, my fate is in your hands. The hot broadcaster is set for like uh, 1600. Gene. And most major health groups. The There's that loud station again. There we go. No bleed over on that either. Amazing what a capacitor can do. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you next time. This is Buzz. Have a good one. Don't forget to vote. Trump 2016. You, 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 you're driving me crazy. And now, an important announcement from known candidate, Dickel after Lockett. My fellow Americans, today I want to address my many supporters across this fruited plain. November 8th is election day a day too important for any one candidate's personal ambition. Therefore, my friends, let the word go forth to all who support my candidacy for president. I urge you all to vote, not for me, but for the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Thank you. Thank you.